All right, so I was recently at the Teardown Conference in Portland and I took this class called WTFBGA. What is an FBGA? This class actually taught us how to use them, but I want to start off with just like what it is because they're becoming much more popular. I have all these cool things to like share with you. Uh, I haven't done videos on any of these yet. And when I do, I want to have something to point to and say, okay, what are we talking about? So FBGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And to break that down, let's start with the second half. Gate array, it's an array of logic gates. It's basically a whole bunch of pins that you can wire together however you want. So like and or not logic gates. You can program them in the field, uh, i.e. use software to tell them which pins should connect to which ones and what the logic is connecting them. It's common to do this configuration using a type of code called Verilog. And that's what we used in this workshop. Incidentally, this was led by Joe Fitzpatrick, who has a really cool business card. Securinghardware.com. Uh, he gave a really great um, tutorial. Unfortunately, I can't show you live because we weren't able to hold onto the hardware and also because in order to set up your computer with all the software and stuff, it can take hours, i.e. outside the span of a workshop. So if you're curious though, you can go to github.com slash securelyfits slash WTFPGA. Uh, I got that pulled up here for you. And it goes through the whole workshop and stuff. So if you really want to learn, you can do all the things that I did, which basically involved taking this uh, cool device, which is a Xilinx XC7A35T FPGA board. Uh, and this is a not just an FPGA on here, but there's all these different things that you use to demonstrate what it can do. We've wired up the logic such that these switches become a little binary counter. As I push each one up, it becomes a one bit and push it down, it becomes a zero bit. They add together up to hexadecimal values. So you've got you know, zero through nine and then A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, and it can add those together and stuff depending on how you program it and whatever. And that's just based on how we've programmed it as part of the workshop. All of this is done without a CPU. When you're wiring pins together directly with logic gates, you gain a few advantages. You can process multiple things in parallel because they don't have to be managed by a central processing unit. Everything happens at once. The bits go in their various pins and they come out, you know, depending on however they're wired together, kind of like shoots. It's really cool. So this kind of thing leads to applications for graphics processing, for file conversion, for like signal conditioning, and cryptocurrency mining, because these are all things that can happen sort of on their own. They're sort of mindless operations where you take one input and just chunk it into an output and there you go. So these can be used to free up processing power on your CPU, for example. Uh, you can offload some of the work that's basically busy work from your CPU onto this little thing and then it spits out the result back into your CPU, then you can use that in your code. It's sort of like using an Arduino controlled by a Raspberry Pi, you know, the Pi is doing a bunch of like cool brain intensive heavy stuff, being a computer, maybe serving you a graphical display. And the Arduino is just doing like, doo -doo, beep, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, you know? <laughs> so yeah, FPGA is super cool. Stay tuned for some of our unboxings. I want to show you really quick a flash of what we've got coming up here because we've gotten a lot of cool mail lately. Uh, oh, yeah, so the critical snickerdoodle is an existing FPGA board. It's got a dual core ARM processor, an FPGA on there, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and it's just $95, and it's got an insane number of pins on it. Like, they had to make these pins extra small in order to fit them all on the board, and they had to develop a special kind of connector because when you had that many pins on a connector, it would resist you too much. So they have these special like everything in order to give you the maximum number of pins that you can have. It's in this tiny little package, all these great specs, super cool. Um, you can get it on Crowdsupply. There's also uh, the Beagle Wire, which I suspect is what's in this box right here. Uh, we've got the tiny FPGA BX prototype coming in here. Uh, and then we also have uh, the gnarly gray, uh, it's an Updino, I think, uh, that's in this little guy here. Also, if you search for FPGA on Hackster, you'll come up with a few different platforms, including Xilinx, who make a bunch of cool utilities for this. Yeah, so stay tuned for more FPGA content relevant to your interests. Get ready to nerd out.